Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Royal Sussex Live. Okay. Oh, just need to make sure you can hear me. Oh, my goodness. What are they doing up there? All right. Just need to make sure you can hear me. Uh, yes, you can. Right? Yes. All right. So, I was listening yesterday, and somebody told me, they said, well, the microphone doesn't sound bad, but maybe it, I don't know. Let me see if I can find that thing. You know how on the, um, my, uh, the, what was that, the We Are the World video? And they had that thing that looked like, um, well, it actually it was exactly what it looked like. It looked like a like a piece of pantyhose that um, it softens up the sound or something like that. But yeah, I don't see it. Okay, never mind. I just okay. I well to me, it just sounded like a little tin can. But maybe that's because I don't usually listen to myself. But either way. I'm going to I'm going to switch microphones. It can still be better. Uh it's going through the USB, so yeah, I'm on the right. Maybe if I turn the volume up or turn it down. Hmm. All right. So, I'm not going to fuss about it. I'll just leave it be for now. Uh so how is everyone? It's raining and it won't stop raining. And I mean to tell you, I'm sitting up here my head is swimming. I just all I want to do is sleep. I've been like this all day, but then if I lay down, I won't be able to sleep. So deal with it, right? Deal with it. Okay. All right. So let me get my face out of there. So, oh, yeah, that is the right thumbnail. So there's Megan, the Duchess of Sussex. And, of course, you can see Katie Couric. Um and uh, there is um, Prince Harry and Meghan's good friend. Is it is it Anderson? No, Anthony. What is that guy's name? Every time I need to know it, I can never remember his name. But anyway, that's like one of Meghan's bestest, oldest, dearest friends. And um, he's always been there for her. He manages Soho House. So... Uh, with friends like that, you could stay for free anywhere in the world. <laughs> One would hope. Marcy Foreman, thank you so much for a new membership. You know what? Now that I'm talking, I'm wide awake. Now I'm wide awake. I've just kind of, you know, I'm in character now. And Mystic Toxin, one love all and happy International Women's Day. Speaking of you, y'all. Uh, think uh, pegged. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, celebrate. I think so. I, I mean, after all, it is uh, uh, Women's Day. So why not? <laughs> Thank you so much for the uh, for the super chat. Why not? Let me see who was here first. You leave me. Uh, Lorna Williams, B. Martim, Karen M., Judy Mutasid. Uh, oh, so I'm hoping that I'm on at just the right time because I did notice a while ago that uh, Special K was on. And since Special K only comes on once a week and I adore Special K, I pushed it back like as long as I could. But I was actually ready a little while ago. But... Um, you know, for, for the content creators that only uh, are on once a week or every so often, I mean, you really got to enjoy that ride while you can take it. You know what I mean? Especially when uh, it's someone who has been in the fight for a while and, and they, you know, have some really great material and such. And another point of view, there's always good to have a different point of view. Um outside of the uh, regular, you know, people that you listen to. So that's always a good thing. 
especially in an open and free society, I think it should be mandatory. You know what I'm saying? It should be mandatory. And if you like something else, then you go back to it, right? Right. Hello, Khadijah Jacobs, uh, H. Knight. Uh, Black Queen is here, Blender Gray. All right, very good. So uh, Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, the X, XF South by Southwest Review. Goodbye, Uncle Gary, in case you haven't heard. Goodbye, Uncle Gary. And of course, more news and yada, yada, yada. Okay, so let's get on with it. It is the International Woman's Day, what's left of it. And um, yeah, and so this is a great time for women to, to figure out what they have in common, right? And help each other rise to their best possible achievements. And of course, to hear each other's voice, to use their voice for the greater good of society. Unfortunately, one thing that we know <clears throat> is that amongst the derangers, which include the MAGA people and the Brexit people, you know, it would be wrong to say, oh, I wish everybody in society thought like I did and that everybody was liberal and <clears throat> everybody I feel is equally important to society. You know, we can't... Um, we can't play God like that. You know what I mean? So, because we don't always get it right. Even when you're on the right side of history, you're not going to always get everything right. There's some things where you might push too hard or ask for too much. But the only thing that I can say to keep from being consumed with guilt is that when you know that you have no malice in your heart and that you are acting out of love and a mutual respect, even if you do get some things wrong, you have to forgive yourself because you've done what you thought was best, right? But that does not, that does not give you any type of um, excuse to hate. And as Megan was saying on stage um, today on the panel, um, that so much of that hate was directed toward her while she was pregnant. And this is from other women. That's what I found extraordinary is that, and I've said this so many times, you would think at a time which is like the most vulnerable for any woman while you're carrying life inside of you. And yet so many of these women who know how sensitive that time can be, they decide that is the most opportune time to go on the attack. And that really makes me sad. That really, really makes me sad, and I'm I, I'm never not shocked by that. Just the same as I'm I'm still trying to understand how could some of those very same women who lived through the Diana years and watched Harry grow up, they literally watched that kid grow up, and yet, and yet you have joined this bandwagon. I don't care who he's married to or what you think of that person, that is still his wife. And yet these same people have so much hatred toward that little boy that walked behind his mother's coffin. Listening to all of these like hate channels and reading all those horrible articles and such, there was one particular thing I saw today with all of the great things that we're expecting. It's just like they laid out a plan to try to, to try to somehow, I guess, slow the momentum of all of the progress that uh, has been made by Harry and Meghan. But today it was definitely Meghan's turn for them to figure out some kind of way to slow that momentum. Which is interesting considering that, like it or not, derangers, Megan is the most popular royal woman in the world. And Harry, the most popular 
royal man in the world. They are the most influential, most popular royal couple on the planet, not to mention the most popular couple on the planet. And then I see these uh, articles where they say, oh, um, Harry and Meghan are going their separate ways with their work so that, um, I don't know. You know what? I never read those articles because I know it's something stupid. But I see the, the headline. And I know it's something stupid there because they're going to speculate about things that they don't know. And you know they don't know it because there are no leaks in Montecito. Ain't no leaks in Montecito. Uh, Sabri Brew, thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you for watching Royal Sussex. And, oh, I'm sorry. Thanks for the new membership. It's a new membership. Well, praise the Lord. It's a new membership. Thank you very much. All right. Very cool. Um, okay. And did I skip somebody? Wait, there's that. Okay. No, I didn't. Marcy Foreman, new membership? Did I miss that? But you've already had a membership, right? But anyway... Thank you for renewing your membership, I think. Okay. I kind of think I mentioned that already, but maybe not. Um, okay. VS Speaks Royal. Thank you so much for being here. All right. Uh, let me see. All that ugly energy sent toward Harry and Meghan has blown back at the others overseas, and they can't avoid it. The rushing wind of karma is coming for them over there, over there. They're getting bad karma, karma over there. <laughs> because the ancestors are coming. Our ancestors are coming <laughs> over there. Yes, over there. So, um, I think I kind of like this one more. Let me see. I think I kind of like that one more. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what women look like. They come in every shape and size and color. Right? International Women's Day. Here, here. Okay. And apropos of that, let's get this business out of the way first. Uh, women leading change in Botswana. Uh, Sagabo story. Sagabo uh, Sesola Maruno is a youth-led advocate of Botswana through her advocacy. Sagabo uh, stressed the need for tailored intervention for young people with HIV, promoting youth-friendly services, sexual education, and community support. She also influenced communication strategies to boost HIV awareness, reduce the stigma, and encourage testing and treatment. Uh, let me see. Uh, culturally sensitive messaging and platform like radio. Uh, her overall involvement in the country coordinating mechanisms, bridge policy, and grassroots advocacy ensuring youth voices were included in HIV response decisions. We celebrate her meaningful participation and strive for increased representation for women in all of our diversity is in key decision-making spaces of health policies. Okay, there you go. Um, wow, I wonder what I was doing when I was her age. Hmm. Hard to say. Wasn't anything as impressive as that. I can assure you that. Uh, Joan Garcia says, Baron, don't sweat the haters. They can kick rocks. Here, 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 here. And we are going to go through some very, uh, by the way, thank you for being a member, Joan Garcia. So there is our Duchess on stage with Katie Couric. And, uh, oh, I'm so embarrassed. And uh, Aaron. Uh, with an E, Aaron, let me get my slides from yesterday. <laughs> uh, 
Aaron, uh, okay, the day before. Aaron, uh, okay. Was it the day before that? Okay, Aaron, uh, uh, let me see here. Aaron, I know her so well, don't you know? Aaron, uh, sounds like Baron. Aaron, oh, what's her name? What's her name? I can't, can't find it. Aaron, uh, okay, you ain't find it yet either, huh? Well, that Aaron uh, lady, you know what? She was so good. She was so good. She had some great questions. And she kept the conversation structured. She kept it moving on and everything. I was deeply, deeply impressed with her. Now, I did make a video, right? Um, but until we know better, let me see. Um, Aaron Haynes. Yeah, Aaron Haynes. There we go. Her name is Aaron Haynes. Um, she was very good. They were all amazing. So let me get some sound queued up and then we shall go through it. Okay. Um, just to refresh my tea. Oh, okay, okay. Just to refresh my tea. Oh, by the way, um, I put the best of Megan's uh, appearance on a single video for your convenience. So uh, if you haven't had a chance to watch the entire, Megan was on stage for an hour along with everyone else and they were all extraordinary. Very good. Um, super, super impressed. Okay. Now, uh, my videos, and, oh, okay, okay, that's it, that's it, that's it. Okay, so I'll just play part of it, and then we'll discuss, shall we? Motherhood in television. Can you tell us about why this project interested you and what the study found? You guys will tell me if this is a good volume then. Yes? Okay. <laughs> um, well, thank you. And I'm just, firstly, I'm so excited to be here and to be with such incredible women, so much brilliance on this panel and a, just an amazing way to celebrate International Women's Day. So thank you all for coming to, to listen. Um, yes, as you were saying, the Gina Davis Institute and Moms First released this report and my husband and I, our foundation, the Archwell Foundation, helped to fund it. Because I think from our standpoint, and certainly from mine, there are three key reasons why it felt vital to see the information they were going to be pulling through this report. So on a personal level, I've just always loved understanding women and our stories and our lived experiences and our shared experiences. So I was really curious to see what the report was going to uncover in terms of, oftentimes as women, you may agree with this, the way that we see ourselves is reflected back to us, sometimes accurately and sometimes much to our disservice, inaccurately in what we see in media. And so to be able to have the findings to uncover what we can do to propel that, to make sure women are really feeling seen in a way that is reflective of who and how we are and how we move through the world felt important. Um, from a philanthropic standpoint with our foundation, there's obviously a lot of work to be done in terms of supporting women and moms. You can begin with paid leave. And, Hello. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, and just really looking at, one of the findings actually said that working moms are paid 62 cents to the dollar for what working dads are. And it's almost feeling punitive at a certain point when you're a mom and you're juggling so much and caring so much and you want to be supported in the best way possible. So it's those reasons and you know, we have a production company and as we build out our slate and have projects that we're doing or with podcasting as well to ensure that we are responsibly filling in the roles of moms and women to be reflected in a way that's accurate. So this report I think is, is really valuable and just proud we could support it. 
All right, so that was the first uh, question um, that was uh, posed to our Duchess. And one of the key things that she hit on was that 62 cents on the uh, dollar that a woman is paid in comparison to men. And, um, and of course, uh, that was her response to a, um, was it a survey or, well, a report, a report. Um, and of course, as we learned, she is partnering uh, in a partnership with uh, Gina Davis, who, uh, of course, has her own, um, oh gosh, the name escapes me, or, uh, organization. But I do have it right here, so no worries. Uh, that was from yesterday, right? Oh, yeah. There it is right there. Yeah, so Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, and Gina Davis. Uh, okay, I went the wrong way. But, yeah, it's called um, Mom's First uh, Fun. Uh, well, I'm sorry, not that one. But uh, Megan Markle is teaming up with Gina Davis to change our per perception of moms on TV, right? On Thursday, the Duchess of Sussex and the nonprofit Moms First are announcing the results of a study on tele. You know what? I got to try to get that and put that on the community tab so you all could see it. Um, Moms with uh, Gina Davis Institute on Gender and Media. Okay. Let me see. Not even uh, Chuckles can articulate like our Megan. No wonder they chased her out so fast. She was and still is uh, the kryptonite to their lazy mediocrity. I love it. Thank you. I love that. Very well put. Very, very well put. Okay. Anybody else? Aaron Thomas? Oh, yeah. Okay. I guess that's her name. Sorry about that. And uh, Yasmin Page said that Megan's friend... His name is Marcus. That is right. I knew it was something that sounded kind of like one of my relatives, Marcus. Actually, I live next door to a Marcus. But um, yeah, so, uh, you know, in my community, that name is uh, pretty popular. <laughs> As a matter of fact, um, what was her name? Um, Eartha Kitt. Marcus. Marcus, darling. <laughs> Marcus. That's what I always think of when I hear the name Marcus. Uh, let's see here. Amber says, see how innovative she and Harry are. So tell me what the other two are doing. Uh, not much. Not much. Uh, let me see here. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue then. Uh, right. There. Okay. Um. Oh, you know what? I'm on the wrong one. So this is what they had, and I do invite you all. Please go on the Sussexes um, website because uh, we need to get some traffic through Sussex.com because they are posting almost. Oh, I don't know. At least once a week, twice a week since they changed it. And to encourage them to keep it up, it would be nice if we put some traffic through that website. Very easy. Sussex.com will take you there. They purchased that domain from someone else who owned it. Um, it's super easy. And, you know, you go there and just take a look through. Try to do that once a week if you can. But there's a couple of new things on there. Uh, this one being one of them. And it says, on International Women's Day, the Archwell Foundation co-hosted a keynote panel, Breaking Barriers, Shaping Narratives, How Women Lead on and Off the Screen at the South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. Megan, the Duchess of Sussex and co-founder of the Archwell Foundation, spoke at the festival's keynote panel alongside fellow female visionary leaders, Katie Couric, Brooke Shields, and Nancy Wang Yuen in a conversation moderated by the 19th Aaron Haynes. Yeah, the moderator's name. Also, who was that other person? Well, okay. I thought the mod well, I thought the moderator was the other woman that was supposed to be on the panel. 
what happened to her? Did she just not show up or did I miss something? Sorry about that. Uh, the panelists discussed the ongoing effect of media and its role in shaping how women are perceived. The group also highlighted the impact of community and its role in fostering a sense of belonging and empowerment among women. The key thing that I think needs to be focused on in terms of e equity is that it's a it's not a zero sum game um, just because someone else has the same advantage that you do doesn't mean that you're losing anything, Megan, the Duchess of Sussex. The conversation concluded with panelists sharing their thoughts on building a more inclusive society and their hope for the future of media. So there you go. And that is very important because even though a lot of people's viewing habits have shifted towards streaming, what is made on traditional television and now with increasingly uh, there are series that originate on the streaming services, uh, which you know, it's kind of one and the same because everything ends up being streamed nowadays. So uh, it's very important with young people, boys and girls, so that they can have more positive role models because there are some people that shape their lives based on what they see on television or what they see with all of these streaming services. Uh, one, one of those things, uh, things that I remember from a long time ago. You guys remember the movie Fame? And of course, that was a school for the performing arts. And there was one particular student who modeled his life in the image of Freddie Prinze. He thought Freddie Prinze was a genius. And he modeled his life in the image of Freddie Prinze who of course died from substance abuse. And unfortunately, I have known people who have used those type of models to shape their lives. You know, it's like they, they idealize or idolize these uh, people that have some very destructive behavior. And of course, um, Freddie Prinze was, he was on the Chico and the Men, right? Am I getting this mixed up with somebody else? But I believe he was on Chico and the Man, right? Well, anyway, um, that's an old television show. But that's why it's so important is that there needs to be those positive role models because thanks to what we see on television, uh, kids are, have become increasingly sarcastic and somewhat mean-spirited uh, in comparison to you know, some of the wholesome characters from the past, but I'm pretty sure that people who go back way further than that would have probably have said the same thing about the characters in the 70s and the 80s. So um, like anything else. Oh, thank you, Sheila. I, I was hoping I got that right. But yeah, that one high school student, he modeled himself in the image of Freddie Prinze. And of course, there was a big incident in the movie where, you know, he almost lost his life because he wanted to be Freddie Prinze. He wanted to be just like Freddie Prinze. And, you know, that, and you know what trouble that can get people into. So that's one of the best examples I can think of. Even though it was a movie, I have known people who have, you know, kind of thrown their lives away trying to identify with someone that they have seen on television or even if it's uh, a, uh, someone in any genre of music or anything else in sports, you see them going to the dark side and it makes it so much easier for the children that idolize them to do that. So um, that is just one of those things. Oh, is that what it was? Okay, okay, thank you, 1960. I knew I remembered that it was something that was life or death, and I could not remember. I thought it was 
you know, by accident, but okay. Okay, that that's even worse. That's even worse. Um, but yeah, so that's you know, we gotta we gotta keep an eye on these young people. We gotta talk to the young people. And um, if nothing else, then at least let them know they have options. And thank goodness um, for the Archwell Foundation and everybody else on that panel that are trying to create positive self-identification, uh, positive role models uh, for, for the young people, young women in particular, because I tell you, um, I, I I don't want to stray too far from keeping this moving, but I remember I was home in the afternoon. And while I never, ever, 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 ever was a big fan of, say, the Maury Povich and the Jerry Springer shows and stuff like that, occasionally you find yourself and this, this was not on YouTube. I literally walked into it, turning through the channels. And I saw this girl do this dance. And it was just, it was, she was degrading herself so bad that I turned off the TV and I went and laid down. I had to lay down um, because of the things that she was doing on daytime television. It was embarrassing. And yeah, it was that's that's all I'll say is that it was embarrassing. And it was before they used the term twerk. It was a different name that they called it. And it was it was horrible. And I'm just like, uh yeah, okay, let me go lay down. That's that was my reaction to it. As I got older, I would find myself doing that more often where something would upset me because I would see this, these these misguided things happening and I'm just like I gotta go lay down let me go take to my bed for a while <laughs> oh let me go and take to my bed for a while uh let me see I thought you were re referencing uh Aaron Thomas who oh yeah I totally messed that up myself no worries okay let's move on so um Hello Magazine, and we're going to get back to South by Southwest, but Hello Magazine, uh, shady as they are, they threw this out there. Um, take a look back at some of the Duchess of Sussex most inspiring feminist quotes in honor of International Women's Day. You are complete with or without a partner. You are enough just as you are. Very important. Uh, women need a seat at the table. They need uh, and an invitation to be seated there. And in some cases where this is not available, they need to create their own table. All right. And over here, be kind to yourself. Truly, if we are treated, I'm sorry, if we treated ourselves as well as we treat our best friends, we would be a million miles ahead of the game. You know? That is so true. There's, you know, sometimes we treat our best friends better than we treat ourselves. You know, I am, I, I can be such a tightwad, right? But when the kids in the family are involved, I am as weak as water. And I'd give you a good example. Uh, <laughs> I finally burned out my pizza maker. You know, I love the pizza pizzazz. I burned that thing out. And I, I need my pizza pizzazz. I love my pizza pizzazz. And I um, have a relative that, that has MS and needed something like, and, and because they eat a lot of pizza, they needed something like that. So I, you know, Without any second thought, I just ordered it, shipped it. Meanwhile, when I needed one, I'm skimming through looking here, looking there. I know it's on sale somewhere. I didn't pay that much for it. And, you know, and I do that a lot where 
I will not even think about it when it's for the people I love. But when it's for myself, I will go without trying to find a bargain. And finally, I said to myself, why are you still doing this? It's a convenience. You need it. You burned out the other one, so it's not like you're not using it. So just order the darn thing. And I did. I had to make a decision. I spent a week trying to save $5. (laughs) I spent a week trying to save $5. I was actually trying to save at least 20 bucks because I remember when those things were $39. And it took me over a week, which is why I haven't changed microphones yet because I'm looking for a bargain. Uh, (laughs) But if it was for one of the kids, it wouldn't take me that long. I'd be just, just get it, just get it. So that is one of the things I really need to improve is to treat myself as well as I treat other people instead of going without something for the longest time trying to save a couple of dollars. I I do that constantly. So, yep, that is one thing I I need to work on. But so, yeah, treat yourself as well as you treat your best friends and you will do yourself a huge favor, right? And then uh, lastly, I think the biggest part of being a girl boss in the office, at home or anywhere you go is just knowing your value. Know your value and worth, right? Know your value and worth. That is very, very important. It'll get you through a lot of bad situations uh, when you stop thinking of, oh, I'm this one's not going to like me. That one's not going to like me. But when you know your value and worth, it makes it so much easier to walk away from a unhealthy, toxic relationship or bad bad friendship or something like that. Know your value and worth. Always important. Okay. Uh, what'd you guys think of the outfit? I'll let you think about that and I'll play this next part of the um, the um, um, uh, the, the, the panel. Absolutely. Megan, why is this such an important factor in making the world more equitable? I, I've said this for so many years and I hope that it starts to land, but I think we can all agree that representation matters in terms of if you're a young girl and you see yourself in a position of power or strength or leadership, you can believe that that is possible. If you look out on the screen or you look out in the world and you see no one that looks like you, it is incomprehensible for most people to imagine that they can have that level of success or joy or strength, whatever it may be. And, you know, the key thing that I think needs to be focused on in terms of equity is that it's not a zero sum game. Just because someone else has the same advantage that you do doesn't mean that you're losing anything. And it actually creates an environment that is so fair, but also inclusive where people feel as though they have a seat at the table as they should. Megan, will you tell the story? Okay. So, um, let's get to the outfit. Well, no, let's, let's talk about that first. Representation matters. It certainly does. It certainly does. There, there is no substitute for it. And considering the excitement that surrounded Megan's marriage into that institution, right? Um, And how people in the Commonwealth suddenly had a, a different feeling about the institution. There, of course, are the hardline monarchists, even in the Commonwealth, that are for the royal family no matter what. That's how they grew up. That's the way it's been. And that's who they are. And then there's the younger people who did not see any real purpose for the royal family before Megan got there. And then all of a sudden, there was this huge interest in the royal family. And we've seen it before. Her name was Princess Diana. 
out of nowhere, here comes all this interest in this antiquated institution called the British Royal Family. A thousand yells of history, over a thousand yells of history. And the person who changed their fortunes, who made them chic and popular, they referred to it as the wedding of the century, right? The stuff of fairy tales said the, um, uh, uh, what is it, of the Archbishop of Canterbury. It's the wedding of the century, the stuff of, of fairy tales. That's what I remember. And of course, we know how that turned out. But Princess Diana brought so much youth and vigor, vigor that is, and energy. She brought light into those dusty hallways, those dusty rooms of the various palaces and such. You really couldn't put a gauge on it. And unfortunately, the very petty Charles Philip Arthur George Mountbatten Windsor, I heard that name for the first time back in 1981, and I still remember it today because of Diana. Diana actually uh, said Philip Charles Arthur George Mountbatten Windsor that, uh, what was she, 19? She was a little nervous. I still remember that. She said his name wrong. But my point is, why do I remember that? Because of Princess Diana. That was it. That was the only reason I know that is because I watched that wedding back in 1981. And all of a sudden, I wanted to know more about the royal family. Because there was so many young people that looked to Diana in spite of the institution, and they thought, wow, isn't that interesting? And they could see themselves in Diana. Same thing with Megan. They could see themselves in Megan, especially there is a minority group amongst so many minorities here in the United States, in the United Kingdom, and so many other countries, Canada, Wherever you go, there's this. There's a minority group in a predominantly white country. There's always that minority group of people, and even in a predominantly black country, they call themselves mixed race. Those mixed race people, and how many of them looked up to Megan? You could say it was a twofer: women of color, black women, biracial. All of them looking to Megan. And then, of course, let us not forget women who have, or young girls struggling to find their voice. They're looking to Megan, someone who has been like a life coach for who knows how many millions of young girls to find their voice, to use their voice. And all of that seemed just a bridge too far for the royal family. We cannot allow this much daylight into this institution. Somebody's got to stop her. The only thing is we all know that the conspiracy to rid themselves of Megan started before the wedding. As soon as they got in touch with her father, it was already in the works that they were going to break this thing up. But that representation was a lost opportunity for that institution. But you know what? They don't deserve it. That institution does not deserve Rachel, Megan, Markle. They're not good enough for Megan. They do not deserve her. Um, and right now, without her, uh, because who knows, Harry, at some point, either he was going to check out one way or the other. He was either going to be... Um, in one of the Commonwealth countries, or he'd have found some kind of way to stay away from London. It probably wouldn't have happened until after his grandmother died, but he'd have found his way out eventually. But the sure way out was when he met Megan. All the confidence, all of the love, 
and and compassion and and all of that that she was able to give him gave him the courage to leave right and and more importantly he wanted to protect his family there was no way that he was going to let i mean that's why i say there's a good chance that harry would have left anyway because how long would he have sat back and allowed that institution to abuse his family because the same way they went after Megan, uh, they would have went after anybody. The only thing is the racial component has caused so much hate amongst people that don't know her, never met her. But there's some hard, and this is a minority of people. It's, it's no way that it's anywhere near uh, half or even 30 or 20% of the people in Britain it's just a hardcore minority of angry, hateful Brexiteers that um, don't like anybody different. And unfortunately, the palace played their role in that. So uh, they don't deserve Megan. But OK, let's get to the outfit. I'm going to go back and look at some of your comments before I continue. Mm. 19, Mary Arthur, young girl, be a breeding mare. They used, uh, discard her. Yeah, yeah, they did. They did. Even had her take a virginity exam and spoke about the virginity exam. I heard one of those people on a documentary that spoke about her like she was some type of... Um, um, race horse or something like they were breeding race horses the way they spoke about Diana. Uh, 1960 said it's so bizarre that uh, two of the most admired and celebrated brilliant and beautiful women in the entire world, Megan and Diana, were part of that family and that family threw them both to the wolves. Yep. They really did do that in 1960. They really did do that. Uh, let's see. Thank you for your comment. Isabella Banks says, very appropriate, well-considered, soft, feminine, and her persona is so large that wearing something louder than this at this stage would, of the game would have made her look like she was trying too hard. I agree. I agree. It was very, very appropriate. Very appropriate. And one thing that I've always noticed about Megan is that when it's time to get down to business, um, uh, the, the high glamour is definitely uh, pushed to the side. Definitely pushed to the side. Um, because, you know, when Megan wants to give that type of, of glamour, everybody knows that she's more than capable of that. But it just goes to show how secure she is that she doesn't have to rely upon that. And uh, at no point, at no point uh, was she trying to upstage anybody. At no point did that happen. And that was what impressed me so much about uh, Harry when he did that thing with Melanie Hobson that time. Um, that they as a favor to Obama, uh, he went to, it was some Obama, it, well, I don't know, I'm sure you guys have probably seen it, where they had the um, two young people, or was it three of them on the stage, and Harry just laid low. I mean, he spoke just enough, just enough. He did not try to compare his privileged life uh, to theirs, even though after reading Spare, we all know some of the things that he's been through. But it was the way he handled himself was amazing. This is why they are such a good match for each other, because they know when not to say anything. They know when to be about the business. And that is an art to be secure enough to know when to be about the business. Let other people shine. Uh, oh, yeah, that again. 
And, you know, again, because she is very secure in who she is and the fact that our Duchess does not wear a bunch of synthetics, right? She just does not wear synthetics. Or at least I'm pretty sure she avoids the synthetics whenever possible, especially anything that's going to lay up against her skin. She avoids the synthetics. And so, you know, this is how natural fibers wear. And that's all to it. And that she's secure enough to just go out there and be about the business. I, I, I applaud that. I applaud that because it it just shows um, uh, a a different type of self awareness. Yeah, and and I've heard uh, well actually I read a comment and this is something that I find anytime that there's a public speaking engagement, they always say word salad. I don't care what Megan says. And remember the the albino assassin, that uh, writer for the Daily Mail? I forget her name, but um, when she went to New York and went to the Miz, at least she said she went, and that was exactly what she said. Word salad. It does not matter what Megan says. That is the one thing that they make sure that they throw out there is word salad would let you know they don't care what Megan has to say. They are going to criticize it, pick it apart, and find some kind of way to try to uh, make her look bad, as if that were possible. But, yeah, never a surprise that that happens. And, you know, um, it's, I, I don't have what Katie Couric said, but Katie Couric said that when she hosted the – uh, what was it, CBS News, that instead of talking about her professionalism and what she brought to the news, instead they talked about her wearing white after Labor Day. They talked about her makeup. They said her makeup was too distracting. It looked bad. And, you know, God bless her, Katie Couric, just about everything that you and and listen, I think her book is probably uh she said it's in paperback now. I think the book is probably very good. If she was dropping truth bombs like that on that stage, imagine what she put in her book. But they went after her looks. And even uh Dan Rather someone that I respect as a journalist, one of the journalists that covered the Kennedy assassination, Dan Rather, who I have always, um, you know, stood up for ever since he was run out of television because of the Gulf War. Even he had something silly to say. Oh, when she told me that, I'm like, oh my God, no, not Dan Rather. Dan Rather. So a lot of the people that I respect and still respect them, I respected those people and I still do. I don't suspect she made it up, but they saw her as a threat because she was occupying a space that was the reserve for men. And they didn't care what intelligence she brought, what it, what skills she brought, her ability to communicate, her ability to lead the evening news broadcasts from a woman's point of view, it did not matter. What are you doing here? That's all that they cared about is you're not supposed to be here. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I thought that went away when Barbara Walters was on television with uh, Frank Reynolds, remember that? Oh, that guy was a nightmare. I thought it ended with that. Uh-uh. It continued. I remember Norma Quarles, NBC News, was it? Or ABC News? I think she had the weekend. They let her anchor on the weekends. She didn't get to Monday through Friday. 
but I remember Norma Quarles. I wonder if she encountered any of that stuff. Okay, you know what? I'm I got to keep this moving. <laughs> let me let me get to the next slide at least because um, it's very interesting topics. Let me see the good old boys of TV news did uh, Katie Curry through. Yeah, put her through heck, uh, telling her she was the, uh, what was it, the cheery girl? Yeah, okay. Is that what Dan Rather had said? It was something something like that. I can't believe it. Dan Rather? The liberal lion, Dan Rather? Oh, God, I can't believe it. I, I cannot not hear it now. You know what I mean? Hello, Marjorie. Thank you for being here. Uh, okay. Is silk is going to get uh, wrinkled? The best they can come up with is the ironing. <laughs> Just go to proof. Oh, uh, yes. Connie Chung. Yes, Connie Chung. Dan Rather did the same thing. Did he? Sonia Johnson? No. No, I don't want to hear anymore. Please don't tell me that. I had so much respect for Dan Rather. And now I'm finding out that he was just as big an a-hole as the rest of them. I cannot believe it. I have had my eyes open for me. Let me see. Dan has grown up a bit over the years. My mother used to visit the bars in D.C., where the network anchors hung out, they were all cheating on their wives. Wow, that's a little bit of uh, <laughs> a little bit of tea. Thank you so much for that. Oh yeah, I remember Frank Reynolds. Frank Reynolds, ABC News, New York. Let me see. I wish they could eloquently speak some word salad themselves. Uh, some people only can mumble. You know what, Marjorie Austin. Interesting you should say that because in preparation for tonight, uh, we actually reached out to uh, Kensington Palace for comment, and uh, you'll be surprised. <laughs> you'll be surprised what they had to say. Uh, Kensington Palace? Well, obviously it'd be... Um, I would love to have met her, um, and and she's obviously she's, a, she's an inspirational woman to to look up to. Um, obviously, on the to this day, and you know, going forward and things, you know, it is, you know, it's a wonderful family. The, the members who I've who I've met have achieved a lot, and you know, very inspirational. So, um, yeah, I do. Okay. Yes, she does. Well, somebody's got to. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for your comment. Moving on. <laughs> um, um, some of the some of the, the 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 people I've met in the family that I uh, uh, they have a, uh, achieved a lot. Um, uh, yeah, I do. Okay, and there is Harry. Here's Harry. There is Harry. Harry and Marcus. I'm sure that's his name now, Marcus. Um, we're watching very closely. Uh, her dear friend Marcus uh, from Soho House. And, of course, her beloved husband from over there, over there. Um how great that was. I got a couple of more shots of Harry looking adoringly upon his wife up on the stage, making him super, super proud. Just imagine, just imagine if other women in royal family receive that type of love and respect and encouragement from their partners. Just imagine how different their lives would be if they had the same type of love and respect and admiration from their uh, partners, but they don't. 
They don't. What they get is bitter, bitter jealousy. They have partners that are jealous and spiteful and, um, and, and what's that other word I'm looking for? Oh, I know. Mm, bitter. And you know, somebody needs to say it. Bitter, <laughs> bitter, bitter, bitter. Yes, bitter, bitter, bitter partners. That's what they have. So until they can do better. But yeah, um, okay, let me go here. So uh, they called them out one by one. And um, they started with uh, Megan. And she threw the first question to Megan. And the last possible chance to comment uh, was Megan. So I thought the crowd was was very um, observant and polite. And, you know, I got to say this, though, and I'm not I'm not criticizing her for it, but it just kind of seems like Katie Couric uh, kind of wanted to lead the panel. <laughs> and I'm not going to blame her because it's kind of like giving the microphone to Patti LaBelle. If you are singing on the stage and there's a group of artists and you give Patti LaBelle a microphone, Patti LaBelle is going to Patti LaBelle. And so Katie Couric, she did try to lead things a bit. Um, I cut off that last segment before it got there, but uh, let me continue. Story about when you wrote that letter to PNG, because I don't know if anyone is, if everyone's heard it, but it's such a great story at a very young age, what you did. That's so funny. Um, yes. I just was disrupted the flow. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's but good. go I ahead. Have a conversation. That's what you know uh, a little bit about, about, about interviewing Katie. I think it's okay. <laughs> um, I was uh, 11 years old, uh, about 11 years old, and I had seen a commercial on TV um, for a dishwashing liquid. And the boys in my class at the time said, you know, it said, women all over America are fighting greasy pots and pans. And the boys said, yeah, that's where women belong in the kitchen. And at 11 I just found that infuriating and wrote lots of letters and put pen to paper and they ended up changing the commercial um to people all over America and you know that's it's it's funny to look back at it now because that was before social media where you had a reach that was so much greater it was just an 11 year old with a pen and paper but it just I guess goes to show that if you know that there's something wrong and you're using your voice to advocate in the direction of what is right that can really land and resonate and make huge change for a lot of people. So your voice is um, not small. It just needs to be heard. Yeah, this is, this is where we're, we're, this is one of the ways where we different. When I was 11, I was playing a prostitute. So, okay, girl. I, okay. I, I wish I'd known you. where we're going here. When I was, when I'm I was a little 11, different, I would have been writing very different letters, but, but, but equally, equally important, I hope. <laughs> Wow. 11 year old Brooke and 11 year old Megan. This one's for you. The uh, what? Yeah. Um, that was hilarious when um, Brooke Shields uh, mentioned what she uh, what was required of her in terms of characters when she was 11 years old. Uh, <laughs> and I I do remember the controversy about Brooke Shields and her mother and you know all and Brooke Shields was very apologetic about whatever role that she played in the perceptions of young women girls at that time and I do re remember that a lot of it was in very bad taste um it was somewhat degrading um, and it was sexualizing someone too young to make those decisions for themselves. So, uh, okay. Uh, Black Queen says, Baron, uh, you, you swear you worked real hard to get the, uh, get the stuttering boy back. I missed it and want it back so I can... Um, what is it? 
I wish I could, but um, they gave me a mark for that last time, which is so odd because I actually used it before the other people used it. But uh, some that's one of those things that they just did not get it right. And um, it is not... Uh, it, but when I put it on the shorts, then I didn't hear anything about it. Somehow on shorts, it, it wasn't a problem. And it wasn't so much him. It, it was the music. Someone made a song out of it. And they used him for the song. And so I got a copyright for the music, but not him. But still, it didn't matter. They wouldn't let me get past that. And I, I do apologize because I, I love that. Uh... <laughs> but you know what? You know what I could try? I could try to do it without adding the music to it because, you know, I added some music of my own. And that seems to be where the problem came from. But I'll, I'll try to see if I can do that without the music. But uh, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. Uh, and by the way, you guys, please hit the thumbs up and do consider getting a membership to the Royal Sussex yourselves. Um, it's never too early to help support Royal Sussex. So yeah, memberships, they only start at $4.99 a month. And for that $4.99, you get an opportunity to use some of those nifty stickers that you see in the comment section. Who doesn't love stickers? I do. Uh, okay, let me continue here. Uh, oh, there's Harry. Now, I don't know what that look was about. However, however, let me show you this. Let me show you this. I don't think it was in relations to this, but I'll show this to you anyway. Check it out. Check it out. <laughs> Check it out. Don't you love it? Uh-huh. Watch closely in case you missed it. <laughs> Very cool, right? <laughs> uh, I, that is the first time I've ever seen our Duchess do that. The first time. And I'm guessing that was for Harry. I don't know. I guess it was for Harry. But uh, maybe it was something that um, is just for them to know. But that was very cool. All right. Back to my slides. And uh, let's see here. Yeah. There you go. All right. So I'll leave that there. And I will play the next part of our Duchess what is it about community building that you feel is so vital, especially to the success of women today? And how is community part of that solution? I think that, you know, at the end of the day, I was talking about it a bit earlier, women especially, well, all people, you want to feel seen and you want to feel heard. And community is a huge, vital piece of that because you, when, when you're part of a collective and you feel as if someone is seeing you, really seeing you, really listening to what you have to say, at a certain point, you feel empowered when you don't feel alone, right? Any sort of fight or struggle, any experience, really, you want to have someone that you can share it with. And so I think the community building piece of that is key. And as we were talk touching on earlier, because there is so much work to be done, that is not a one man or one woman job. And so the collective of all of us working together, understanding the shared goal that is in the interest, best interest of our shared humanity is just key. You can't you can't do it by yourself, and I don't think you want to. Okay, to your point about the momager, um, the momager or the manager that Brooke Shields had was her mother. Was it Terry uh, Shields? No, is it? I can't remember her mother's, her mother's name. But Brooke Shields insisted her mother protected her from the worst of Hollywood, that she was a very strong woman. That, and she was very protective of her in spite of some of the things that she was, you know, paid to do, like those Calvin Klein commercials and uh, remember Blue Lagoon and other stuff um, where they 
made demands upon her. I'm trying to couch this properly. But anyway, um, her mother, she, according to her, her mother was very protective. And yes, I do believe there was some falling out at some point because of, um, you know, whatever happened. And Brooke Shields has been so po apologetic about everything that she feels she as the actor was responsible for, right? Um, and I feel bad about that because I'm like, I don't think she needs to apologize because she was not emancipated. She was a child and she certainly was not emancipated. She was not at an age where she could even sign a contract and it would be binding. So what is she apologizing for? But she feels a need to do that because she realizes that some of those things were degrading and and that it uh, set a tone in, in Hollywood or help establish a, a, a things. Yeah, I'm I'm struggling for the words for it, but <laughs> and I don't mean to, but you know what I'm saying. I'm just trying not to get in trouble by saying it the way it should be said. But yeah, so, and I remember those days that they were making her way too sexual. Okay, there I said it. They were sexualizing her at a very tender age. And that was uh, troubling for a lot of people. And I, I don't like to see that happen with anybody young. And in particular, when you see that it's... Um, yeah, it's, it was not a good thing. It was not a good thing. And some people were shocked by it. And there's a designer label now that is pushing the envelope as though it never happened, right? I don't want to say the name of the brand, but there's a designer label that is pushing the envelope and they are really in your face with it. And they're not the only ones to have done that. Um, gosh, what's that store where the men would... They would have the models stand outside with their shirts off. I mean, I know the name of it, but again, I don't want to get in trouble. But there was this one apparel store where they had the guys stand outside with their shirts off. Well, the ads that they used on those uh, advertisements, ad campaigns, made it look like it was, you know, some relative's basement or like you were at a sleepover or something and you just know what the tone represents, right? So in case you don't know anything about Brooke Shields, it wasn't just ads, but she was also in movies and they pushed the envelope. And of course, I think you could say the same thing with uh, Jodie Foster, maybe. Uh, maybe Tatum O'Neill. I'm trying to remember. Well, there was a few people where you could say they um, were really, you know, overdoing it with someone so young. But that's been going on in Hollywood for a long time. Uh, thank you, LDSW. Lauren Brown is here. Thank you, Lauren Brown, for being here. You had a video up last night or the night before? I can't remember, and I'm so sorry I did not watch it, but I know you recently posted something. Or two. So, um, but yeah, if you could share the link and I'll put it up at the top. Terry Shields. Okay, Terry. All right. Thank you. Oh, she wasn't wearing. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, really? I did not know that. Wow, she was such a good actress. Yeah, um, I always thought Jodie Foster and Tatum O'Neill. Remember the movie, The Little Girl That Lives Down the Lane? Oh, my God, that was such a good movie. The Little Girl That Lives Down the Lane. If you have not seen that old school movie, I know it was Martin Sheen and that little guy that played the... Um, the, the Magician, that was such a good movie. Creepy, creepy, creepy. 
good movie. The Little Girl That Lives Down the Lane. Check it out. Okay. Am I done with these? Let me see if there's one more part. Um, it actually connects perfectly to what you're saying because to the point of having so many fantastic female creators and founders of production companies that are making such good work, I, I think Bella Bajaria is such a great example. She's at Netflix at the ex executive level of bringing in the content that reflects our stories in a holistic and real way. She's a woman, she's a woman of color, and that speaks to our earlier question about representation, right? She's in that role, and in that role, in a position of power, you are able to then share that more broadly so we can all feel more seen. Then on the flip side of a different sector, not entertainment related, but since we've talked about Gloria Steinem a few times, I think she's such a fantastic example of why we all have to keep going. She's turning 90 next month, or this month. And, you know, you look at Glow, and at 90, she still knows there's work to be done, and she's not throwing in the towel. And I think there's something so beautiful about that to go, whether you're a nine-year-old girl or a 90-year-old woman, you can absolutely continue to make the change that we all need. And I, and I think it's a, it's a great, great reminder for all of us. Agreed. Well, listen, I cannot think of a better note to end on. I cannot think of a better way to spend International Women's Day. Thank you all so much for your representation. Thank you so much for breaking barriers in the way that each of you have and will continue to do. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Oh, thank you, Lauren Brown. Let me uh, do that before I lose track. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, Tatum O'Neill's problems were with her father who considered her competition, really? I mean, I knew they had a falling out, but I didn't know that it was to that degree. Okay. Okay. Okay, Lauren, I don't see it. Um. I mean, I see it on the one thing, on the one screen, but I don't see it on the other. So can you do that one more time, please? And uh, I'll make sure I catch it this next time around. Uh, let me see. Yeah. And uh, I'll make sure I catch it the next time around. But oh, we had a a, a troll. <laughs> okay, I love that somebody would wait seven days or more just to uh, to try to make trouble. I'm actually flattered by that. Very flattered. Okay. Over there, over there. Ha, da, 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 da. Uh, she's still chatting up to talk. Okay. Oh, okay. No worries. I got it myself. Oh, I don't know why that happened, but uh, I think I got it. I think I got it. Okay. And that, oh, it was a day ago. Got it. Okay. All right. So copy. There we go. 
Getting deep, Sussex is in New York, responsible technology, environmentalism. Oh, that sounds juicy. I have to check that out. Okay. And there we go. Uh-huh. There it is. Now I just need to pin it. You know what, uh, VS, when you try to pin something, don't that little heart get in the way? You have to make sure it clears all those things on the right-hand side. Boy, does that get on my nerves. It's the heart, the smiley face, the 100, and something else. It gets in the way when you're trying to pin something. <laughs> yes, that's, you know, and sometimes I'm just like trying to catch it, and then I can't find it. So, yeah, you understand. I hate that little hard thing popping up in my way. All right. Okay, there we go. And just in case, there it is right there. All right. Uh, oh, okay, let me see. You can see more details of Megan's uh, outfit here. You can see the very subtle pattern, uh, the stripes in the top. I don't know if it's in the skirt. It looks like it's in the skirt, too. It doesn't look wrinkled to me. I mean, not, not like somebody slept in their clothes wrinkled. But yes, there's a line or two. Well, I tell you, some people, some people just look for anything. And I'm, you know what? Look at how much fun. Look at how much fun Megan is having. She is just, I, I think maybe Harry might have been a little nervous, but when is he not nervous for Megan, right? But he may have been like a little nervous um, and just, you know, in his own way, trying to pull for her, you know, but uh, that's okay. That, let Harry be Harry, right? Yeah. Uh, perfectly easy breezy. Absolutely. And then I've heard some criticism from people that she should have dressed a little more business-like or something like that, they said. Okay. Um but then if she would have done that, then they would have said she was trying too hard. So I like Katie Couric's suit. I, and I, I love what Brooke Shields is wearing. Brooke Shields is, you know, it's a power suit, obviously. But with the very low cut neckline, it is also quite flirty. So that makes it kind of fun. And also, did you all know that Brooke Shields were so tall? I mean, she's got to be, she's got to be about this in her heels. She has to be at least as tall as Harry, if not taller, in her heels, of course. So she's probably a good. Oh, I wonder how tall she is. She must be about six feet tall. Okay, but anyway, I'm not here for all the rest of them. You know, I'm just here for the, for our Duchess. As much as I like to say that they were brilliant. I am only here for our Duchess. And there you can see a, a few images of Harry just smiling and grinning from ear to ear. Okay. And what did she wear? Well, fashion. Megan is wearing a, is that Galiva uh, Heritage Lena skirt in striped silk with matching husband shirt in striped silk. Accessorized with uh, Bottega Veneta. Bottega, that means boutique. Bottega Veneta. And what is that? Not earrings and Valentino Caravani uh, Roman stud flat mules. And uh, first seen in 2021. Okay. Well, there you go. That's what she's wearing. That's what she's wearing, just in case you wanted to know. And it looks like somebody had her sign their program, huh? And um, I don't know who that lady is standing next to her, but if that is the typical uh, woman from Texas, I bet you the uh, crime rate is probably pretty low. <laughs> 
if that is, uh, you know, typical for the average woman in, in Austin, Texas, there probably is no crime. There probably is no crime because I'm telling you that one right there. I mean, you look at her and all you can hear here is broken bones, um, uh, severed this and broken that. That's a big girl. That's a big girl. But uh, <laughs> I, guess, I guess for International Women's Day, you might as well get uh, a, an example of every possible physical type. And this one right here, I'm telling you, that ain't the one to be messed with. That ain't the one to be messed with. I mean, look at her. She's ready to pounce. She's smiling, but she is ready to pounce. But that's okay. You know what? Um, I will never, ever criticize anybody for protecting our duchess. Right? Ever. So do your job. Do your job. Do your job. Okay. You think so? Uh that one no, I think that's uh I mean look at how to look okay, okay, I tell you what, look at the blazer. You see where the button is? The button is on the on the left side of the lapel. Yeah, the button is on the left side of the potato. Uh, uh, Lord have mercy of the lapel. I was about to say the button's on the left side of the patel, the left side of the lapel. Oh, ah, <laughs> uh, let me see here. No, that's not Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields was wearing gray. That's not Brooke Shields. I mean, take a look at Brooke Shields' outfit. You see that? That's not Brooke Shields. Nope, that's not Brooke Shields. I bet you her name is Donna. I bet you her name is Donna. <laughs> uh huh. Try to follow her into a courtyard or try to follow her into a dark alley. You will come back with a nub. You will come back missing body parts. Yep. That's okay. I like her. I like her. Plus, I think that when it comes to um, physical protection for women, I think it's always important to protect the dignity of the woman that you have at least one um, female uh, protection person with you. I think it's only, um, you know, necessary to do that because you know you want to protect their dignity <laughs> were you there <laughs> were you there <laughs> oh okay brooke shields is six feet tall okay Okay. Yeah, I didn't know she was so t well. I mean, yeah, I I rem I watched that sitcom she was on, and I do remember that she was tall. Uh, Brooke Shields was in a sitcom. It was actually very good. I forget the name of it, but it was a sitcom that she was on, and I used to watch it in syndication, and it was very good. Okay. All right, you guys. That's enough about Donna. Let's keep it moving. Now, check this out. Don't you love it? Don't you love it? They went for some barbecue. A whole physical shield, huh? <laughs> Lauren Brown, I didn't know you talk like that. I think I'm being a bad influence. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Donna, 
Yeah. You want to go get some lunch? Uh, I'm trying to watch my figure. Anyway, wait, wait, wait. I know a good barbecue place nearby. Y'all stop it. Donna just doing her job. She's not there to be uh, popular. She's only there to do her job. And um, the fact that she could probably uh, bench press a fiat is not anything that we should take lightly. So enough of that. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, they went for barbecue. <laughs> It was recommended to them by Donna. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. I'm through. Let me keep this moving. It's International Women's Day. I should be ashamed of myself. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, they went for barbecue. Yeah, that's it. They went for barbecue. No, that's not it. Uh, but check it out. Uh, they're doing a selfie right there. And look, 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 there's our faves. There's our faves. They just happen to go get some barbecue. Now, what is it about Harry and Megan? Everything they do is just. Beetle. Oh, sorry about that. Everything they do is just adorable. This is what I was trying to do. Look at there. Look at there. I think someone in the restaurant actually filmed. Um, them outside hugging the owner or whoever. I guess she's the owner, um, and and possibly a friend of Donna's. But um, yeah, they they um, the owner and possibly a friend of of Donna's um, was giving them a hug. I know, I know. I got to stop. I got to stop. I told you I was kind of sleepy earlier, and I'm starting to get loopy again. So uh, forgive my just. I'll, I'll just stick to the, the 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 program such as it was laid out, and we'll leave Donna and her friend here alone. Uh, but yeah, so I'm sure the brisket was wonderful. <laughs> Look at there, and there's the selfie. How cool is that? How cool is that? Yes, yes. They took a selfie. Let me show you the, the outside again. Love it, love it. Now, next time I'm in Austin, Texas, I'm gonna have to make sure I go by that place. Uh, <laughs> uh, Black Queen, please don't encourage me. You know I cannot uh, control myself. But uh, yeah, so there you go. They were at a uh, restaurant there. And right there, you can see our family. So I need to try to find this someplace else so I could actually see what's on there. Because that print is not very good. So give me a second here. Okay. Um, all right. So like the, oh, I can't read that one. Or can I? Like the badass bosses, they are Leanne and her wife, Allie, runs La Barbecue in East Austin. The couple split their time between the live music capital of the world and L.A. with their pups, Mr. Oliver Pickles, attorney at law, and Bobby Dinkles. <clears throat> okay, and uh, let's see right here at the bottom. <laughs> at the bottom, it says, "The barbecue." Thank you so much, uh, Megan and Harry, for visiting us today. It was so nice to meet you both. Yes, yes, very, very cool. And congratulations for them. Obviously, their food is 
excellent. And that was enough for someone who lived locally to say, yeah, you got to go by that place. It's called La Barbecue. So very cool. Very, very cool. And once again, there's look at how good they look, right? Look at look at the light that's coming from their faces. What a great day. Every day should be like this for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and everybody they encounter. And notice that our Duchess is very casual, yet smartly dressed, wearing denim, uh, denim pants and a denim shirt matched with that cream colored blazer. Very, very cool. Yep, very cool. Okay. Uh, let me see. Is she glowing with happiness? I hope so. Or, or something else, maybe, but who knows? <laughs> uh, but a glow is a glow is a glow. And right there, holy cow. Um, okay, looks like one of the patrons or one of the employees took a photo with our duchess. And there again, you can see Harry and Marcus and the rest of the crowd. Now, what I heard, let me see if I can find it. Uh, I'll share it with you later. Uh, the local Austin American statesman wrote an article, see Meghan Markle, Katie Currit, Brooke Shields at um, South by Southwest 2024 on International Women's Day. And then over here on the right, you can see, uh, let me see if there's a price. I heard that that uh, dress or the top and bottom was about a it was about a thousand dollars maybe let me see if I can see a price all right I don't see a price but it is called a husband shirt and the skirt is called the Lena skirt in striped silk there you go Galiva uh, Galiva is that the name of it Oh, well, but there you have it. There you have it. Uh, oh, it's linen. Okay. Okay, linen. Thank you so much. And yeah, the natural color linen is that, right? Kind of like an off-white, antique white. All right. Very cool. Thank you so much, Lauren Brown. Monochromatic look. Thank you, Deborah Anderson. And, of course, there is the host, uh, the one that was leading the panel. Uh, she was very, very, very good. Uh, the 19th News Editor at Large, Aaron Haynes, is introduced at the keynote Breaking Barriers Shaping Narrative, How Women Led On and Off the Screen at the South by Southwest at, uh, at the Austin Convention Center, Friday, March the 8th, 2024. Yeah, she was very good. Um, all right. Yeah, I heard it was about a $1,000. All right. Okay, so I'm done with that for now, I think. Yeah. And I covered it. Yeah. So I'm done with that for now. Let's go on to Misa and Harriman. Uh, Misan Harriman is still hanging out with the big stars. There's Dominic uh, Sessa. He's in that. <coughs> Excuse me. It's been raining. My allergies. Give me a second, you guys. Yeah, I think I'm getting a little bit of a post-nasal drip. So, um, Misan Harriman, uh, who is, of course, the director of the Oscar-nominated The After, which is streaming on Netflix, uh, he was hanging out with this Dominic Sessa. And, of course, the Oscars are, what, Sunday? So he's had a busy week networking and i am so proud of him 
this is someone who was going through a very troubled period in his life and his wife thought it would be a good idea to give him a camera so that he would have some sort of distraction from some of the troubles that he was having. And he picked up that camera about five or six years ago. And now he is like the toast of Hollywood, right? The toast of Hollywood. And um, yeah, so that guy, he's in the movie, The Holdover. And that's the one I think that's winning all the awards or one of the movies just winning all the awards. But from what they say, it is very good. You can see how many stars that they have been given that movie. So don't know when I'll see it, but it came out January the 19th. And it's called The Holdover. And um, what's her name and what's his name is in it too. Um, I should know his name because I've seen him in so many things, but I'm just not good with names tonight. <laughs> so, um, yes, yes, he has been an amazing friend to the Sussexes and has been knowing Megan for a long time. Um, and has always, uh, you know, been very supportive of the Duchess, uh, the Duke, their family. I think they've had a couple of play dates or something like that. And otherwise, the other thing I love about Nissan is that he's such a humanitarian. The fact that uh, Nissan, Nissan has picked up his camera to identify some of the misdeeds, some of the bad situations in this world uh, is pretty awesome. So even though he's an artist and he is the toast of Hollywood right now, he has not forgotten where he came from and he has not forgotten people that uh, don't have a voice in this world. So that's why I like him so much. He's very, very good and a great photographer at that. Okay, and right here, wow. Well, let's start off with the tweet first, right? Uh, Prince William is focused on a strategy that could revolutionize the monarchy. Spending time away from traditional royal engagements, opting instead for hands-on, behind-the-scene work. My thoughts. Okay, so Cameron Walker, that Paul Giamatti, thank you so much, Lauren Brown. How could I forget his name? Um, I remember he was on Downton Abbey, and and I just that fast I forgot his name. Uh, yeah, so William is trying to reinvent the wheel, if you would. Uh, yeah, he's trying to reinvent the royal wheel. He's trying to change the way people are royal. Uh, and it only took him 42 years to come up with this new clever scheme to change the way he will represent the United Kingdom. So in other words, his reign is going to be one where he does things that are more deliberate, right? Uh, he won't be seen publicly as much. He's going to work behind the scenes and do some things that will not necessarily show him operating publicly, but more covertly for the greater good of all humanity, especially where the environment is concerned. In other words, he's going to do exactly what he's been doing, little or nothing, nothing at all. And his staff is going to run about um, typing out those statements with full of platitudes about nothing in particular uh, from someone who is not well versed on the topics or the subjects anyway. This is his excuse to not do anything, is that he is going to change things. So he's not going to be like Queen Elizabeth II and go to this hospital wing and to that supermarket and to this uh, agricultural show, he's not going to do any of those things. 
even being the Prince of Wales and going to Scotland and never putting on a kilt is a departure from tradition. Or is this the end of the monarchy? William is, well, it's his to destroy. I'll put it to you like that. It is his to destroy. I have no skin in, in, in the game. Uh, I don't have a dog in the fight or whatever those colorful colloquiums are. It's none of my business. But let's see how that plays. So Glow, uh, super squatty Glow says, wow, what a blatant way of trying to avoid working for our tax funding and pretending to do more work in a way that we cannot see for ourselves if this is true. It seems that Prince William's reign as king will be about closing down even more of the very little accountability, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, that is his new thing is he is going to work away from the cameras. So don't expect him to be as visible only for the big occasions and only if his stepmother is not standing in for his father. Okay? Leg says, so not doing the work and pretending he's Harry and Meghan. Bingo! Bingo, bingo, bingo. Yes. Yes. And, you know, if Harry had set out to make things difficult for William, nothing, and of course he has not done that, but nothing would have been easier because William is so, what is that word that someone always tells me when somebody is not so, uh, when they're very basic and they don't seem to, limited. He's demonstrating how limited he is by falling right into a trap. The only thing is Harry is a royalist. Harry is a monarchist. Harry does not want to destroy the monarchy. Harry has seen the benefits of the monarchy because of his father's prince's trust and because of some other things that the Commonwealth has done well, right? The Commonwealth doesn't do nearly enough. I mean, not nearly enough. There's nothing common about the Commonwealth. Most of the profits goes to Mother England. We all know that. But it's not all bad either, okay? There's a lot of good, and Harry believes in the best, right? So let's just get that out the way. But if Harry was trying to set a trap, which he is not, William, with this goal of outdoing Harry, would walk right into it if there was. I, let me just caution. I'm not saying that there is. It certainly isn't. But he has become derelict in his duty by trying to chase after Harry's popularity. This man has been doing this since they were children. And he's still doing it today. See, I told y'all yesterday, I said, where's Legs? Because by this point, Legs would have said something brilliant. It would have been something that I couldn't articulate myself. And it always comes at just the right time. And didn't I tell you, at the time when I needed it the most, there was legs. That's it. So not doing the work and pretending to be he's Harry and Megan. That's it. That's it. Okay, y'all. I'm finna go. I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> we can call it a day. But no, that's it. That's it right there. It's as though he is being lured into a trap, but it's a trap that he has set for himself. Harry is not thinking about him. Harry has work to do. And with all of the resources available to William, he is looking in the wrong direction. 
Hasn't he seen the Wizard of Oz when Glenda, the good witch, said, you've always had it. You've always had it. William has plenty things to work with. This is a mistake. And don't think I'm helping them out because it, when William's determined to destroy something, when William is determined to make a mistake, he's going to do it. So they're not listening to me. Whoever is up at Kensington Palace listening to Royal Sussex, you can go and repeat it to him right now. If it's not chasing after Harry, he ain't going to do it anyway. But I would advise William to stick to the status quo. Be a monarch for your country and stop trying to be um, king of America. We don't want a king. We don't want your brand of celebrity. We have Harry and Meghan. We don't need you. You know, the, the, those villains, Harry and Meghan, this is how they were received in Texas. This is how they were received in Texas. Oh, can you see the hostility? Can you see how those people are frothing at the mouth and, and gnashing their teeth in rage? How dare they come here and enjoy our beef brisket? Can you see that? Plastered all over their faces is contempt for those two. I've never seen such contempt. Oh. William, you're making a big mistake, buddy. And it doesn't have to be that way. But he is making a terrible, terrible mistake. And there's nobody to stop him. He's just determined to do it. He need to go sit down someplace, right? Hey, girl, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Stars, they come in. Yeah, so there you have it. He needs to go sit down somewhere. He needs to listen to um, Nina Simone. Sit down. When Nina Simone says, hey, girl, sit down, y'all know she talking to William. <laughs> Y'all know she talking to William. I know it. You know it. Everybody know it. She's talking to William. <laughs> yeah, I would say she was talking to William. So... He needs to sit down someplace and stop trying to be Harry and Megan. Big mistake. Big, big mistake. Okay. Now, you all, this is William today. I, I want to try to be a, a, as polite about this as possible. But this is William today. He looks like hell. That's 42-year-old. Uh, Prince William. He's lost weight and it still looks like he has a bruise on his neck. But he looks unwell. He's looking more and more like his brother, I'm sorry, his uh, Uncle uh, Edward. He's looking more like Uncle Edward. See there? I don't know. It just, to me, it seems like I still see a bruise on his neck, but I don't know. It could be the shadow. But he's looking bad. He looks he looks dehydrated. It seemed like the light is bothering him. Yeah, he looks bad. Yeah, that's that's what's left of the Prince of Wales. That's William today. And they took a ton of photos, and all of them, one one after the other, they one looks worse than the other. I took a ton of photos. Thyroid, 
Mm. 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 <laughs> that mannequin proves that he did not do that. <laughs> And and to be fair, even if that was a mannequin that they stuffed into the car with her mother, how would you know the difference? Because even on her most animated, even on her best days, I've always thought Kate looked like a mannequin. So um, a mannequin, uh, a wax figure from Madame Tussauds or Kate Middleton, it's hard to tell which is which. She's not the most lively person. She goes from being very flat to laughing like a hyena. So it's hard to tell. Plus, I need for her to be re to recover because Kate is responsible for some of my best material. And I'm just not ready to lose that. You hear me? I'm just not ready to lose it. <laughs> oh. Oh, good night, Rafaela, or 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 a uh, bonusera, a bonusera. Okay, so right here, Mark Schaefer says uh, scheduling Fuber at um, what is that? What does Fuber mean? Is that an acronym for something? Anyway, um, scheduling uh, Fubar at the South by Southwest, people are camping out in Ballroom D to see Meghan Markle later today, blocking us from seeing our preferred sessions. Hello. Yes, there were so many people that were camped out, hoping, wishing, and praying for a chance to see the most popular royal in the world, Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex that it made it nearly impossible for other people to get by. But what do you expect? I mean, after all, it is Megan. So that was fun to see that. And, of course, the Daily Mail, I'm surprised that they decided to run the article about what Megan said. I didn't read the article. Um, I was just too happy, and I didn't feel like they're nonsense. But I just took a screenshot um, from the article because I, I didn't want them to try to take my buzz away. Judy Matasset, Baron, do you think people in charge can see William destroying them? What do you think they will do? He is costing them money. It will not last. Um, well, Judy, I believe that the two houses, Clarence House, and Kensington Palace are at war, as I pointed out earlier this week. Uh, William is put in this very bizarre position where he is going to have to play second fiddle to his stepmother, something that was never supposed to happen. And Charles, the same way he um, skipped that whole thing of princess consort, and went straight to queen consort. And then as soon as the queen died, after getting her to uh, give her blessing to the use of queen consort, now it's just the queen. Now she is the queen. And leading these ceremonies actually puts her in the same ceremonial duties as the queen would have been, Queen Elizabeth, on those big occasions. Now, technically, she is not ever going to reign. Uh, I just heard myself say that, and I'm starting to think. Anyway, but technically, she is never going to reign in her own name. That's never going to happen. But just like Charles, she seems to be functioning as a regent but not in name, but she's functioning like a regent. Except, except um, William should actually be the person doing that. William is supposed to lead these things, which is why I believe that William 
is not well. I think it takes days to get William in shape to go out and do his role, to execute his role. I think it takes days. I don't know if they have to dry him out, um, detox him, or something that they have to do to get him up and able to go out that door and do the work that he's doing. He's lost weight. I think he's lost weight. I, I just think that he's he's getting thinner. And he looks very withered. He may be wearing makeup. But yeah, he just looks different to me. He looks different. Now, he yeah, he just looks different. And and the people around him, to your point or your question, they can see him. And are they trying to stop him? He has a bunch of enablers at Kensington Palace. And I do believe that most of the people that work for him are either afraid of him. Those are the lower ranking people, right down to the driver or the carpet sweeper or whatever it is, or they are actively helping him and they don't have much respect for him. I think that most of the courtiers do not have a great deal of respect for the royal family. I believe that most of the reporters do not have a great deal of respect for them. How could you respect someone like this who is so feeble and so weak in his head? He is a very feeble-minded person, reactive, petty, childlike. How could you respect somebody like that? He does not earn respect. He's given respect, but he hasn't earned it. So if you are a leader of any sort, and you're not taking an interest in the work. You can never depend on those ambitious people around you to do it for you. But that's exactly what he's doing. He is a bad comic that is depending on someone else to write his jokes. He's like a comedian that stopped writing his own jokes a long time ago. And so now you depend on other people. Now, some people are going to find that, well, the jokes are clever. They're a lot funnier, but he doesn't deliver them so well, right? So that's what I think it is. It's just that they don't care enough. They don't think that it's ever going to end. So there's no urgency amongst the people that work closest to him to fix it. The traditions mean nothing to them. And why do you know, I'm sorry, how do I know that they mean nothing to him or uh, to them? Because it means nothing to him. If he was a traditional royal, he would hire people to help maintain that tradition. But instead, he's hired those little uh, hit men, little hatchet men to help him reshape the monarchy. Which is, which explains why Charles is keeping himself busy. It explains why Charles it quickly made it known that he was going to do his work and that William was not needed. It's not that William is not needed. William is not capable. He's not capable. He doesn't have a lot of patience. He doesn't care. He really does not care. He does the very least. It's almost as though he is so angry at Harry for leaving that that is his excuse to not do anything because he has been abandoned. And it's the same with Kate. Whatever is going on with Kate, the minute Kate's condition required her to stay away from public roles, Almost in the same breath. And William's going to stay home too. Stay home for what? Out of his own mouth, he said they have two Filipino nurses that do everything. What is there for him to do? 
What is there for him to do? Just last week, someone said they divided the school runs between William and that head nanny, right? Uh, Baromo, whatever her name is. But then this week, because William took off again, they said, oh, William uh, does the school run every day. Does he? And why would he? Because the other day, wasn't that Carol and the mannequin going for the school run? Everybody said at the time of day, uh, they were going for a school run. If it was that time of day, they were going for a school run. But then this week, they just said nobody's going but William. They can never get the story straight. But no, nobody is going to stop him from destroying the monarchy. There's nobody that's going to stop him. It was a bad idea, everything that happened when they went to the Caribbean, and nobody stopped him. It's his to, to make or break, and he's going to break it. It doesn't mean it's going to be the end of the monarchy, because after a while, people are going to just keep looking and thinking, well, let's see, George would be 18, George would be 20, George will be 21, and they'll just keep kicking the can down the road and allowing him to make a fool of himself. So thank you, Judy Matasset. Uh, very good question. And the answer I come up with is nobody's going to stop him, and the people closest to him do not care. And the, the uh, tabloid media, they are going to just keep making excuses. They're going to keep trying to get you to look at Harry and Meghan. And they may as well uh, make people look at Harry and Meghan because William is. That's all William does. <laughs> Doesn't uh, his uh, peg employees uh, want to keep him in power? No, they don't want to be there. They don't want to be there. They are, are adding to their own resume or their CV, if you will. You know... One of the things that we have seen in the U.S. is that very few people in the presidential cabinet stays up until the end, right? If a president is in office for eight years, you have some people that are going to stay through the first four years. You're going to have some people that drop off along the way in that first four years. And you will have very few people that started off helping to campaign for that candidate that are going to stay the entire eight years at the White House. Because now that they have that on their resume, then they could really go and wield power someplace else. So I don't suspect anybody that is closest to him in terms of his courtiers or aides or secretaries I don't think that they're going to stick around that long because of who he is. That's the reason why Kate keeps losing secretaries. And that's the reason why he seems to have a revolving door. It's because nobody wants to work with them. And because they like to project, they keep putting that on Harry and Meghan. Oh, there's another staff shakeup in Montecito. There's another staff shakeup. Is there? Ambitious career people come and go. And in particular, when you have to deal with William and Kate, who has no vision of their own, everything that goes wrong, they're going to blame you for it because they haven't thought of anything themselves. So I don't think anybody wants to stay that long. Once the shine has worn off, right? Once you have taken your mama on a tour of Buckingham Palace, like um, uh, Jason Knopf did, took his grandma from Texas to the Buckingham Palace. Once you've done all that kind of stuff, then, you know, it, it loses its luster. You're ready to move on. And plus, anybody who works there seems like they're going to go and work at some big bank or big corporation, but they'll be back and forth. They'll be back and forth, just like, um, uh, what's his name, Michael uh, Forsyth? The, the guy that's so close to Prince Charles, he's been in and out of that household several times. 
And anybody who works for William is going to do the same. They'll be back again. So, uh, but thank you. Uh, good, 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 good conversation, Judy Matasset. Okay. And Lex says uh, he's battling too many fronts. Uh, he owes the media, the Middletons. He is at war with Camilla, the Middletons, and one-sided war with Harry. He, he can't keep it together and is eating him literally. Wow. Wow. There you go. There you go. There you go. Very well put. He is battling on too many fronts. And he's going to become exhausted and lose the war. Because he has that invisible contract with the media. He took that uh, payment, right? Uh, uh, let's see what else. <clears throat> and then, of course, Camilla. No easy target. Camilla. He is at war with Camilla and his father. But Camilla is the one who just don't care. Uh, she doesn't care how, how, how much he gets hurt. Because Camilla is just there for Camilla at the time being. She don't care what's going to happen to him later on because her kids are not aristocrats. Her kids are not married into that family. She don't care. She got her money. She got her position. And right now, she is leading him. So let me see. And then, of course, yes, thank you again. The one-sided war against Harry. That is exhausting. The one-sided war against Harry. There's no winning that one. Leaking and briefing has gotten so old. There are fewer uh, occasions where you see British tabloid uh, reporters on American television. A lot of the, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of the snarkiness that made up every report about Harry and Meghan on American TV, uh, that has all but disappeared. So they don't really have anything. They don't have anything. The very brilliant thing with the book, with Spare, was put it out there, let them debate, let them talk about it, and then put it behind you. Brilliant. And, and it's done. One and done, as they say, one and done. He's at war with people that he cannot defeat because as long as his father is alive, his is not the last word. Charles' word is the last word, okay? Or at least should I say as long as his father is fit and healthy and able to work and able to function, there you go. And now we're not even sure that Charles is as sick as they let on because they won't even tell you what kind of cancer it is. I mean, technically, the ability to have cancer is in every human being, technically speaking. So it's not like they can say that. You know what I'm saying? It's just I feel like they're exaggerating something in order to give cover to William. And by the way, I've had an update about uh, Kate. And I'm not even going to hold you in suspense. Give me a minute and I'll tell you. But thank you, Legs. Once again, outstanding. Uh, let me see here. I'm, you guys, I'm talking too much. I need to get through some of this stuff. Why am droid? What if whatever happened to Kate was so volatile that one of the kids saw, heard, I think losing it in front of him might weigh on him. Woof. Thank you, Why am droid. <clears throat> okay. Okay, now, the little update that I have has nothing to do with something terrible that he's done, right? N not exactly. But I think Kate has been under a lot of pressure. And that pressure includes William. But allegedly, and I have to say super, super, super duper allegedly, 
uh, about a week ago. And that's why I say allegedly, because this may have only happened because of about a week ago. But one of the squatties was of the opinion that it sounds like colitis, right? And then when you think about how puzzled that one American doctor was when they were trying to figure out why would you be in the hospital for two weeks for, you know, what abdominal surgery takes 14 days. And the truth is, well, I won't say the truth, but there's a possibility that it was longer than 14 days because we saw that emergency motorcade head in direction of the hospital on the 28th of December. So it is very much possible that the surgery was scheduled. It's also possible that Kate may have been in the hospital long before they had an announcement saying that there would be a surgery, that there was a scheduled surgery, there is no cancer. Okay, you following me so far? So if it was colitis, and I'll let you guys look it up and decide if that's a possibility, but it seems as though she was in pain. It seems as though she's been having trouble eating for some time, right? And even, even the tabloids have been sharing images of Kate holding her stomach as though they're trying to tell us something, as though they're dropping breadcrumbs like this is the way out right here. They keep showing pictures of her holding her stomach. Now, that could have just been because of what surgery they said she had, or it could be because she was in very bad shape. Now, I've had two relatives that had blockages in their small intestine. Very, very serious. Very serious. Because a portion of the small intestine uh, was without blood flow, right? Not to say that we know that any of that has to do with Kate. But it was a very serious surgery to fix it. Very serious. And if it is colitis, if it is, then that means that in the future, she may have to endure using um, a bag, a poop bag, if that is what it is. We don't know. This is all speculation, but that is the thing that I keep hearing, and not just from one particular squatty, but it's like a couple of other ones who feel as though they are close enough that they can confirm that that's exactly what it is. Still very serious. Still very, very, very serious. About as serious as anything else. So. There you go. That is the last thing that I heard. May or may not be true. It may be something that was circulated by the palace just so that we wouldn't know that maybe somebody else had something to do with it. So, but if that is the case, it would explain a lot, but then there's no real evidence except for the things that people have been saying. So uh, thank you, YM Joy. <clears throat> and uh, Deborah Anderson, thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you so much for being here tonight on Royal Sussex. Okay. Irritable bowel syndrome. Uh. Um, if she hasn't already... I don't think that all of them live in that house. Why would you live there and Windsor Castle was just up the street? Why would you live in that cottage if Windsor Castle was just up the street? You know, if they have a bedroom, if all the kids have bedrooms at Admiral Hall 
if all the kids have bedrooms at uh, Kensington Palace, then it's quite likely that they have bedrooms at their house in Balmoral, at the uh, Adelaide Cottage, and at the Windsor Castle. Because if they're not staying at Windsor Castle, who's staying there? The Queen's not there anymore. Seems like a terrible waste, doesn't it? If I was William, and I'm not, why would I stay in Adelaide Cottage when I could stay at Windsor Castle? Just saying. I mean, it's right up the street. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Very, that's why I said it is either way, either way, something uh, terrible has happened. And if it's that, that is very serious. And people said it appears as though she had been on steroids. That would explain that too, wouldn't it? Wouldn't they uh, use steroids to fight the inflammation? Uh, Ingrid Sowers, that's also a possibility. All of that is a possibility. <laughs> Thank you, Karen DeMars. Oh, wait. There we go. So what if the clothes are big? How much of your deranged money did you spend on the clothes? Go sit down. Y'all heard her. Hey, girl, sit down. Sit down. Yes, yeah, sit down. <laughs> Okay, okay, so a sigh of relief for the palace. Kate Middleton's Uncle Gary Goldsmith is first contestant to be kicked out of Celebrity Big Brother House during Thursday night's episode. The housemates learned that Lauren had received the most nominations for her fellow uh, from her fellow housemates this week. So um, he's out, you guys. He's out. Um, I remember he said, whenever there's an announcement, whatever announcement that they make about Kate, then he'll be able to say more. And it almost seems like that announcement would be coming sooner rather than later, uh, the way he put it, as though he knows that there will be an announcement soon. Good night, VS Speaks Royally. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, and I think I'm almost done. Let me see. Oh, happy birthday, Edward. Uh, today is Edward's birthday. Edward has just turned 60, I think they said. And, of course, upon hearing that, I said, only 60? Well, yeah, Edward is 60 years old. Also known as Rambolina. Remember that day he confronted that black man who was trying to help his mother? He said, can you just step back? He was just like some kind of action figure or some action movie star, the way he set upon that um, kind and considerate and thoughtful black man that was working at the subway station that had recently been named for his mother. Can you just step back? Can you, uh, you think you could just step back? And here was the queen that walked up to him, but Edwina, the one of the most courageous, dare I say, a profile of, of courage himself, told that um, tube worker to, can you just step back? Oh, he was so tough. He was so tough. I bet you when he got home to Ford Fiesta, they was rocking and knocking them boots. He was so courageous and so manly for all of five minutes, the way he confronted that uh, man of African descent who was too close to his mother. Mother? <laughs> so, of course, inspired by that, I quickly made a movie poster 
And I uh, changed the name from Rambo to Rambolina. That's right. Prince Edward is Rambolina, first blood. And, of course, the catchphrase from the movie, just step back. Can you, can you just step back? So, anyway, happy birthday, Edward. Many happy returns of the day. All right. So, thank you very much, Mod Squad, which includes uh, Church Nelly, Lydia Washington, Cookies and Cream, Adrian Burroughs, uh, Dominique Anastasia Isabella Christensen, uh, Black Queen, Lucy Wynn, Elaine Parker, and BS Speaks Royally. Thank you all so much for keeping this a safe space. And thank you all very much for your very thoughtful contributions and support for Royal Sussex. And of course, you all, please keep um, Jerry White in your prayers. She's having surgery next week, and it's going to be a big deal. And um, anyway, she just asked that you keep her in your prayers. So please do that. And aside from that... I don't have anything else. And I went through everything I wanted to share there. So, yeah, that was it. Uh, <laughs> he needs to be at war with that hairline. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, Julie, I believe that the extra added pressure to be something that she wasn't. And I think that Willie could have possibly maybe allegedly have put a lot of pressure on her to be more like Megan. If he's going out of his way to be more like Harry and to do things that Harry do, then I think the pressure was on because of his leadership. The pressure was on in the household to be as competitive or to try to even, God help them, outdo Harry and Meghan. Remember how much criticism there was about the Netflix camera crews, the Netflix camera crews? Um, only for William and Kate to suddenly find themselves followed by camera crews. They were late for the coronation because they were making this slick video featuring music and lots of, you know, glances and all kind of weird stuff going on. They had to do that, right? Because they're trying to be a very modern royal family. So what do you do? You make a video. But anything that he's ever proposed is something that's already been done. Whatever it is, uh, Prince Philip was instrumental in bringing cameras into some of the unseen spaces. And of course, the queen was uncomfortable with it. And eventually, uh, the documentary that they made was banned from television, although it pops up on streaming uh, services here and there, but they banned it because the queen was horrified by what she had seen. You know, like referring to some diplomat as a gorilla. <laughs> you know, it's something about seeing the queen uh, refer to someone as a gorilla that would cause you to pull something like that off the... Um, airways right so that was just one of the problems that they had uh, but aside from that it was just a wholesome <laughs> it was just wholesome family entertainment right i mean what a head of state has not referred to a foreign diplomat as a gorilla i ask you i don't know seems like they all do that I say sarcastically. Mm. Uh, yeah, the, the colossomy bag. Yeah, uh, Amber. 
Yeah. Could be that. Lottie, thank you so much for the membership. Now, I suspect you had one and maybe you just switched out your payment method, but thank you so much. And for the rest of you guys, remember, the memberships are still a bargain at just $4.99 each. Of course, there are some higher level memberships that comes with uh, a great more appreciation. But aside from that, that's about it. But it goes a long way to help support the channel. So thank you very much. Yeah, well, you guys, let's, let's remember this. Uh, Kate is a mother and a daughter and a sister and a few other things. But um, particularly for her children, I hope she has a speedy recovery and that their mom is able to run around with them again and bike ride with them and all that kind of stuff. and. Um, you know, teach them how to jazz hand. I, I hope she's okay. I mean, because, you know, you can't depend on others to teach your kids how to do the jazz hand. That's something that can only come from a mother. Well, I was serious most of what I just said. I just had to throw that in at the end. <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> that wasn't too shady. That was fun. Okay. Um, so let's close out today with the last word from one of my favorites, Stacy Solomon, who um, somehow has, I guess, said what a lot of people are thinking or have thought. So. Let me see here. Yeah, we'll let Stacy have the last word. Uh oh, that's the wrong place. Okay, there we go. Okay, how come I'm not seeing it? Oh, that's weird. Am I doing that wrong? Let me try again. Video. Movies. Ha, huh, got it. I just don't get it. I don't get any of it. What I'm do you like, mean? You don't get what? Yeah. I don't get why we're so obsessed with these humans that are exactly the same. Like, it could be us four sitting there. I just don't get it. But um, are you talking about what you mean as royals or yeah. as, like, Kim Kardashian? Because for me, they're becoming celebrities. I no, love to the me, queen. That's all they are. The is, queen is, is their celebrity. I love the queen. Brilliant. I but love the what? queen. No, for I'm, duty, responsibility, She's always worked head. really hard, But I would she? work hard if the whole country paid for me to have, like, 12 houses and work really hard. Well, they don't pay for all of the houses. But Just but, a few. <laughs> you know what, though? I am so surprised... I am so surprised because uh, Prince Edward, he looks like the kind of person that when he sees someone like that tube operator standing so close to his mother, he seems like the kind of person that would... He seems like that kind of person that would just just call a popo, don't he? And then, of course, pull the curtains close and pretend like it's it was the house on the other side of the street. That's what he seems like to me. A real drama mama. Yeah, that's it. A drama mama. A real drama mama. That's what he seems like. I bet you he wouldn't be calling the cops if his wife's motorcade ran somebody down again. Do y'all know Sophie's costume? 
Do y'all know Sophie's motorcade spends more time on the sidewalk than it does on the street? It does. Her her motorcade spend more time up on top of the sidewalk or the pavement than it spends on the street. Half the time when Sophie leaves the house, they spend as much time weaving through pedestrians as they do on the streets. That's why they keep hitting people. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I suppose that if you're visiting central London, it would probably be wise to check the uh, calendar and see if Sophie has any engagements, because otherwise uh, you're putting your life at risk if you're on the streets of London. Because Sophie's motorcade is always weaving in and out of traffic all up on the sidewalks, going through courtyards and, and playgrounds and everything. You can't trust her. You cannot trust her in that motorcade. So, I mean, it's been documented. There's been at least three times that they've had a, an incident. So save yourselves. They've killed before. Okay. And with that... <laughs> <laughs> As Maggie Smith would say, nah, I, 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 I really must be going now. Um, <clears throat> As Maggie Smith would say. <laughs> Mrs. Crowley, do not think us insensitive. Do you remember that time she got into it with uh, Matthew's mother? Mrs. Crowley, please don't think us ungrateful. Let me see. <laughs> I told y'all, I'm, I'm kind of punchy. It's been raining all day and I, my eyes are just heavy. I don't even feel like logging off. That's how tired I am. I don't feel like logging off. It's just been raining all day. All day. I even wanted to go to the supermarket. And I said, nah, it's raining. Better to order something. Okay. Uh, let me see here. <laughs> Oh, you want to get in the car again? Okay, I better do it before I lose it because I didn't actually record it. I have it on the bookmark. But uh, let me see. Get in the car. I think that was three days ago. Let me check the slides from three days ago. <laughs> Charles. You know I don't mind. I thought it was funny myself. I love that. <laughs> It's good to know you all have as warped a sense of humor as I have. Uh, okay, yeah, there we go. There we go. Thank you so much, Boo Boo. Get in the car. All right, let me see if I can find it before I promise anything. I got to look for it someplace else. <laughs> I like that lady. I could hang out with her. She's funny. Uh, so I go here. All right. <laughs> and uh, the Princess of Wales has been spotted for the first time since oh, having abdominal surgery more than two months ago. But the image of Princess Catherine in a car with her mother in Windsor has done little to quell the rampant speculation about her health. The photos also sparked a fresh round of conspiracy theories that it was a wax figure in the car no. or, ding, 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 a, no. or a body double. Oh. That is not her. What? what? Really? I don't know? think that looks like her. It's it Pippa. could have been her sister, Pippa. Doesn't look like. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's a I wax, just don't a wax think that's her. No, I don't know what. 
but you know. I just I don't mean, know why are we pouring over a grainy image and then speaking with because certainty. Because we haven't over... seen her since Christmas no, no, Day. No, I get that, but we can't say that's not her. Like that. Oh yes, we can. I just did. Okay. Right. <laughs> but you know what I mean. You look at it. I you look at it. I realise how many times I've looked at her over the years. Okay. Yeah. And I just go, that doesn't look like her. Okay. Isn't it interesting because the, the royal family isn't papped ordinarily. So it looks like they've forced yeah. her into the car. Get in the car. Driven her past the paps <laughs> in order to put everyone's everyone's minds that at ease. Camilla. Get, yeah. get, get in the car. Get in the car. <laughs> get in the car. <laughs> Charles, she won't get in the car. <laughs> what should I do? <laughs> <laughs> to put everyone's everyone's minds that at ease. That Camilla. Get, get, get in the car. car. <laughs> get in the car. Charles, she won't get in the car. <laughs> what should I do? <laughs> oh, boy. Does all chain smokers sound like that? Is that like the voice of the aristocratic chain smoker? Because Camilla used to... Camilla not only smoked cigarettes, occasionally she would just eat them. So that was like a little snack for her, just eating cigarettes. So, um, yeah, but I, I love that. <laughs> what should I do? <laughs> and when she made that face. I didn't get that. Would you try again? No, Siri, I'm not talking to you. When she made that face, that that right there just destroyed me when she made that face. Pretending like she's smoking a cigarette. That right there destroyed me. Get in the car. Charles, she won't get in the car. What do I do? <laughs> uh, thank you, Boo Boo Romero. That was fun. All right. So love you guys. I will see you all tomorrow. And I'm going to look and see if I can find any interesting images from the... Um, what do you call it, from the um, South by Southwest. And uh, hopefully they the Sussexes made some other stops that they can share. That would be really cool. We'll get some more stuff tomorrow for sure. Uh, Lisette says that lady should get an Oscar. Good morning, everyone, and thanks, Baron, for the laughs. What a way to start my day. Very cool. Thank you so much. Glad to help. And thank you for saying hi before we log out of here. All right. Again, I'll see you all tomorrow. And, um, <laughs> yeah, Siri wanted in on that one, right? Okay. Yeah, a lot of times when I would say hello to Sherry Ware, uh, Siri would uh, say, I didn't get that. That's because I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> I would say hey and then that's why Siri thought I was talking to him and okay so see y'all and good night oh did, I didn't do the thing yet did I did I yeah I did right oh yeah 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 no I didn't okay okay sorry about that oh I know what I forgot. I know what I forgot. The queens. There we go. When you see the queens, it's time to go. You know what I mean. All right. Now that.